Hi, everybody, and welcome to Mackey's Element Series Microphones, creating a cross-categories live presentation. I'm Brad Gagne, a product specialist at Mackey, and we're coming to you from the virtual NAM Believe in Music event. We have a ton of great stuff planned for you, so thank you for joining us. Please be sure to follow us online. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at Mackey Gear, and also visit our website, Mackey.com, for more details about your favorite Mackey products. Make sure you stick around until the end because anyone here who is attending NAM Believe in Music and is participating in the event chat will be eligible for our giveaways. We're going to be doing three separate giveaways, an Element EM USB microphone and a pair of MC100 headphones, an Element Carbon USB microphone, and our Element Chromium USB microphone to three lucky attendees. You don't want to miss it. Joining us shortly are three very special guests, Rita Bautista of the Latina Podcasters Network, legendary voice actor Rob Polson, and live streaming sensation DJ Kova of Tweak Music Tips, each one who's a fellow Macoid and a user of our products. We can't wait to hear their thoughts on these, but before we do that, I'm going to invite on the product manager for the Element Series Microphones, Craig Reeves. Craig, hey, how's Brad. it going? Hey, how, how are you? How you doing, man? I'm doing great. This is such a weird experience. I'm doing NAM and I'm wearing slippers. <laughs> it's so strange. It but is I like cool, it. isn't it? Yeah, I know. It's I like pretty it. chill. Miss seeing everybody's smiling faces and being able to handle the gear, but this is definitely cool to still be able to do this and uh, adapting in a way, using technology to communicate and showcase these new products that we love so much. Yeah, um, for sure. So what do you say we give the audience a quick rundown on uh, the Element USB microphones? All right, let's do it. All right, let's do that. I'm going to share my screen here real quick. Can you introduce us to the lineup? I can. So we have um, uh, now four USB microphones in our microphone lineup. It's weird to think that before 2020, we didn't have any microphones. And now we just released our second round of mics. Uh, and that brings us up to four. We have the EM91CU, the EMUSB, the EM Carbon, and the EM Chromium in our Element USB lineup. Wonderful. And we're going to go into the details here just to go in from uh, start to finish there. We're going to start with the EM91CU, which is basically a USB version of our EM91C condenser microphone. We took That's out right. the, is what you're currently using, correct? Yeah. Absolutely. So we just basically took out the XLR jack, slapped a USB in there. Um, affordable, professional quality condenser microphone, rugged, reliable construction, really living up to that Mackie motto, built like a tank. Uh, your standard cardioid polar pattern, great for vocal performances, podcasting, live presentations like we're currently doing, working from home, school from home, uh, anything to do with voice or even recording some acoustic instruments like acoustic guitar and stuff like that. Uh, sample rate of 16 bit, 48 kilohertz, literally uh, CD quality right out of the box. And there's no drivers necessary. Just plug this thing in and it, it works. Yeah, class compliance is a big thing with the uh, EM USB microphones. We wanted to make sure they were as easy as possible to use. And that's what we like. Can you tell us a little bit about the EM USB? Absolutely. So this is actually the oldest USB microphone. We released this at NAM 2020. Um, and so the EM USB is actually kind of the centerpiece for your audio connectivity. Uh, it is a, a microphone, but also a USB audio interface. And so it connects to the computer via USB. You plug your headphones into the microphone. You don't need any extra stuff for that. You don't need to worry about headphone jacks or adapters or whatever. And uh, you can control not only the gain and the headphone level, on the microphone itself, but also, of course, you got a mute button there in case the kids are raising heck behind you and you're in your working from home and you need a little quiet break. Hey, uh, I'm working over here. <laughs> and the great thing about the EM USB 2 is that it, it, it not just comes with the microphone, but also the cable you need. It comes with a folding stand and the mic clip all in the package. And so you have everything you need right out of the box. Absolutely. That's the microphone that I'm currently using right now for this presentation. Nice. Yeah, it yes. works great. 
So uh, next up in the lineup, we've got the carbon microphone, and this is next generation performance, uh, USB-C connection for highest possible bandwidth. And the big thing with this is you got five discrete capsules in here that gives you five available polar patterns. Um, sure. So yeah, so you've got your cardioid, super cardioid, figure eight, uh, omnidirectional, uh, just a lot of different options and possibilities with this microphone. You could use it in multiple settings. Um, and to capture professional quality audio, which is great. Headphone output with mute, volume control, and built-in gain control as well. So you've got uh, all that at your fingertips. You don't have to touch the computer. You can make all the adjustments uh, right there. You have an included stand with the cable, so everything you need out of the box. Again, class compliant with the whole lineup here. Just plug it in and it works, which is wonderful. So next up, we've got the Chromium microphone. Can you tell us a little bit about this one? our flagship so chromium is it was a way that we address our core mackie user you know mackie's been around for over 30 years and and we've really made our bread and butter addressing making products for musicians and so chromium was made with that in mind uh it's perfect for like a singer songwriter. The great thing is, is it, it's got all the microphone features that we're talking about, selectable pattern, adjustable gain, mute button, but also the base of Chromium has a mixer. And so you have a high Z input with variable level. You have an aux in a stereo I uh, input with variable level. You have peak metering for in and out. And of course you plug your headphones into here as well and variable level there. And so it really allows you to sit down and with one product, um, plug a bunch of stuff into it and you don't have to take a whole bunch of other things around. This mic does it. Obviously the microphone and the bass and everything comes with a stand, stands part of the microphone and, uh, uh, once again, like Brad said, class compliant, ready to work right out of the box. I like to call it the uh, Swiss army knife of USB microphones. It's like a complete studio package in one mic. For sure. Wonderful. So another great thing that all these microphones come with is the included software. So you get professional software right out of the box. Uh, the industry standard for recording is Pro Tools. We're going to give you Pro Tools, a special version of Pro Tools first. Comes with its own plugin bundle, the Musicians Collection bundle with 23 plugins. You get plugins like BBD Delay, 11 Light, 304E and 304C Compressor with EQ and Compressor. Um, and we also give you another DAW, full feature DAW, waveform and traction, which comes with its own plugin bundle as well, the DAW Essentials bundle, which gives you 16 powerful plugins like Equalizer, Compressor, Reverber 8, and Limiter. And these are actual plugins that you'll use to help your mixes shine right out of the box. This is about a $500 value that we give you for free. So you get the microphone, plug it in, no drivers or anything necessary to get it working on Mac or PC and uh, you get the software, you're ready to start creating right away, which is great. And we're really happy to be one of the only companies I can think of where we're offering two different distinct DAW packages in their software bundle. So uh, that's pretty neat. That is, yeah. Use, use one or use them both. So, And that's pretty much the Element Series USB microphones. If you want to level up your mic game, that's what you want to look into by checking these guys out. You can see those on Mackie.com. And uh, we're going to get into some actual real case use, uh, use scenarios that people are actually using these microphones and using them in a professional setting. And we uh, want to invite on some guests to do that. So at this time... Let's bring on. Yes. yes. At this time, it brings me great pleasure to introduce a leader in the podcasting and streaming community who's uh, got her hands on a few of our microphones. I want to welcome Rita Bautista from Latina Podcasters. Hey, guys. Hey, Rita. Hi. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm doing God, pretty good. Sparkly. That's awesome. I have, I found a very awesome secret. So I know everybody who learned how to create a home studio had to figure out different things. And I didn't really like like, you know, the green space or anything crazy. So this is actually padding that oh, goes wow. underneath a uh, carpet. I found it at Home Depot. <laughs> so I created my own studio out of it and it works really well. It sounds got, great. Yeah, thanks. Great color as well. Thank you. <laughs> 
Yeah, it looks like you're almost in space or something. It's pretty cool. Well, you know, that's like the topic of discussion these days is like galactic rights and like SpaceX and all that stuff. So I think I'm fitting right into 2021 then. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay, to infinity and beyond. So exactly. can you tell us a little bit more about what you do? Yeah, so um, my name's Rita Bautista. Obviously, I'm the founder and CEO of the first podcast network dedicated to amplifying the voices of Latinas. And so what does that mean, right? Um, we created a space for um, community in order for podcasters that are Latina or Latinx to be found. One of the most difficult things for independent podcasters is to create a space to find audience and listenership. So uh, one of the things that we focus on is making sure that we are connecting the podcaster to the audience and then also creating a space for brands and ad companies to connect authentically to the Latinx um, audience through the voices of Latinas. So kind of like a twofold here, we have an opportunity for anybody who's a brand or um, has campaigns that they want to connect directly to the Latinx audience, um, they can come to us and we can help them um, find these specific podcasts under the genres that they're looking for. And for the podcaster, we give them a sense of community and connect them to audience. That's Very awesome. Cool. Yeah. Where are you based out of? So I live in Houston, Texas. <laughs> Great. But now with uh, all the uh, technology, you can link up from anywhere across the world, right? So Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, that's wonderful. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about uh, your sound and how you, uh, what microphones you're currently using? So you've used some of the Element USB microphones. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so my whole setup right now is all Mackie. I have the headphones, which are the, and I wrote this down, so I had it, <laughs> are the MC100. And I also am currently using the EM USB. Um, and it's really easy. It's just plug and play. I actually get a chance to use that for podcasting. Anytime I'm recording with podcasters, um, to be on their podcasts, to record my own podcast stuff that's coming up. So, uh, rebranding empowerment and all that to be called Empo Empodera Latina, uh, which oh. is going to follow my journey in the startup world and also talk to other Latinas that are entrepreneurs as well and their tips and tricks on entrepreneurship and growing their brand. Um, so I have really great experience to use this, this for podcasting, but also um, I go live a lot on social media. So Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. And one of the great things about this type of microphone in particular is that with an adapter, I can connect it directly to my cell phone. So it has enhanced the quality a um, hundred thousand percent on the um, just the way that the audio sounds when I'm going live on social media. Um, and the good thing is, is it's all hands free. So I don't have to touch anything cause it's, I have a boom arm too. So you can't <laughs> see all of it. It's all behind the scenes, but, um, but it works really well. And I've had great compliments and a lot of people who've been asking me a lot about the products in general, because one, they're easy to use. And I make sure to let everybody know that like as podcasters, specifically independent podcasters, you normally tend to be the producer, the editor, the host, the scheduler, the, uh, you know, you're doing your own, mo um, transcriptions, you're doing everything. So normally one episode can take you anywhere from four to eight hours, depending on how um, how much editing and how much it's going to take you for the length of the podcast or anything else that you want to add to it. So anything that's going to make my life easier, which is creating good sound quality, uh, plug and play. Um, you know, obviously you want to find your own levels when it comes down to how you want your voice to sound. But for me, this all works really well. I mean, it's anything that cuts down on time um, makes me happy and good sound quality makes me happy too. So I get all of that with all the products that you guys have supplied for us and also um, have just been really, I mean, even the feedback on on some of the raffles and giveaways that we've done, um, podcasters who've received the uh, microphones are just really pleased with, with the quality. That's awesome. Rita, I wanted to ask you when you mentioned the the products, the MC100 headphones mm -hmm. and the EMUSB, did you get the creator bundle? Did you get like all of those in a single box? Did I got a lot get... of microphones. <laughs> 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 okay, if you did, I just wanted to bring up if you didn't that one of the 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 neat things about the EMUSB uh, releasing in 2020 is we actually have a bundle with that microphone that includes that mic, 
a pair of the CRX monitors. It's the three inch, it's the small ones. Mm -hmm. And then also those exact headphones that you're wearing as well. So uh, it's a, a, a great starter pack for someone who is looking to get into content creation, but uh, they don't necessarily know where to begin. Uh, it covers all the bases. So um yeah, I mean, I, I I didn't get the monitors, but I did get everything else. And one of the things that, especially for podcasting, um, which is what I, you know, I'm kind of the person that I can speak on. I, I can speak on podcasting in particular, uh, but because it can be a little intimidating when you're jumping into this space, right? Not everybody who's a podcaster is a producer, but right. you are technically a producer now. You can actually call yourself a producer because even if you're just plugging a microphone in and recording yourself and then uploading it, you've already done the production portion of the podcast, right? So yeah. I think what's great is one of the biggest things for me is in the space for Latinas in the Latinx community, um, continuing to join podcasting. One of my biggest things is just record, just do it. Just go ahead and don't be afraid. Um, it doesn't matter if it's not like NPR quality to get started. Uh, it really helps rip the Band-Aid off so that people get used to what their voices sound like um, if they're even wanting to do this, right? Like even to make sure that this is going to be something that they can be consistent in. And I think that your pricing actually is really great because of that. Like if somebody's wanting to get started and they want to start with a basic starter package, or let's just say it's just the microphone, I think your prices are extremely comparable and great for the quality of the audio that the person's going to get out of that space. So. Just, That's awesome. We, yeah. I, I, I appreciate that. Uh, everyone at Mackey appreciates that. <laughs> <laughs> it's really been kind of our brand story, right? Is yeah. enabling creativity by offering a ton of functionality at a, um, a lower than industry standard price. So, uh, uh, that's great. And uh, also, we got a prompt just to ask everybody who is on stream right now to uh, chime in with your favorite element microphone model so that we can start to uh, see the giveaway that we're going to do at the end of this. So um, that's my... <laughs> and I just, yeah, drop it in the chat. We also would love to know where you're from. And... I just want to tell Rita, I mean, your vocals sound very crisp, very clear. You could tell how professional you are and the, how you really take this seriously. It just sounds amazing and, and really appreciate your input in that. And we're actually going to be giving away the package that Rita is currently using right now, an EM USB microphone and a pair of MC100 headphones. So definitely leave a comment in the chat for us and, uh, and any questions that you might have for us as well, too. We're here to answer a few questions while we have Rita on uh, before we do the giveaway. So if you guys have any questions, you guys can fire away. Any podcasting questions too, guys, I'm more than happy to. <laughs> yeah. I was just live right before this talking about podcast questions, but so Rita, I, I wanted to ask because I know it was a difficult thing when I was looking at it is how do you get inspired by like your topic for a podcast? Like, you know, there, there are some standard, like true crime, for example, or mm -hmm. fitness, for example, I'm not one to talk about fitness, but <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, but uh, how do you find your niche? How do you find your voice? So I think for anybody who wants to get started, depending on what they're trying to accomplish, right? There's a couple of different things that you could do. If you're a business and you're trying to get more referrals, podcasting is a great marketing piece that you can add to your brand. And we'll also get more attention out there about your product. And also ad buys are also opportunities for people who don't want to actually podcast, but they want to get brand identity out there with a specific genre. Right. Um, so there's there's like a twofold opportunity with podcasting. This is one of the reasons why I love it so much. Um, the other thing is, is how to develop a niche is really like, Okay, who's your avatar? Who do you want to who do you want to talk to? And I think yeah. sometimes the first and always know your first podcast is not going to be the best. Nobody jumps out of the gate being Joe Rogan getting paid millions of dollars from Spotify. <laughs> Even he had to go and do his podcast for over 16 years before he was actually gotten before he got noticed. So, um, you know, I think that there's an opportunity to get started and then start developing your niche from there. So, the what I always tell everybody is like, how would you Google the topic of your podcast. 
how would you Google the topic that you're trying to relay to the person that is um, that you're communicating to, right? Like if it starts off with you being the person that you're trying to talk to and then the audience comes, that's great. That's awesome. You're already onto something. That means that you hit the nail on the head. But nine times out of 10, most people won't do that right out the bat. And one of the things that we're also noticing for our particular community, the Latinx community, we're not actually the biggest true crime people, listeners. We are more into um, society and culture, um, self-help, um, and a lot of other uh, random things. And we're starting to pick up on the other spaces. Music is another one. Music podcasts are huge for us. Like, So if you already know this information, do a little bit of research before you get started to find out exactly what you want to talk about. And the the more niche or the more specific to that topic, as much as that sounds really crazy, like if you get super, super specific, you think that nobody's going to listen. But truthfully, getting uber specific is what's going to grow your audience a lot faster. Right. So, awesome. you know, if, sense. yeah, and, and like, let's say you're, I'll just use Latinas, for example, right? You're a Latina who podcasts and you like cats and it's a specific Garfield looking cat. I don't know the <laughs> name of this piece of the cat, but it's just go with me, right? Like, so you say, this is a podcast for Latinas who love Garfield or whatever. So there might be, so of the entire world, there are, well, in the US, we'll just go US based. There's 56 million people. Latinas are half of that. And so let's say, and that's just considered by the census, right? Like, so 50, let's say 28,000, 28 million. Out of those 28 million, you get more narrow, more narrow, more narrow. But because you have the niche that's so specific, you're now targeting, let's say there's like 10% of our entire community that loves to listen to podcasts about cats. That's a large number. Um, and then it takes a while, obviously. Consistency is key for podcasts. Um, you know, your first year, if you hit 120 downloads per episode, you're killing it. Like wow. 120, yeah, 120 downloads is actually pretty average for all the million podcasts that are um, now million plus podcasts that are accessible all over the world now. So don't be afraid of your numbers. Create something that's very specific and targeted to how you would Google that particular podcast, right? Like if you want to find something very specific, then Google it that way. And also, don't be afraid to use Apple Podcasts as a search engine as well. Because any true. topic that you put into um, Apple Podcasts will pop up and it'll show you all the episodes. So you don't actually have to reinvent the wheel, just get a little bit more targeted than they are and your audience will find you. For sure. Thank you so much, Rita, for joining us. That was wonderful. We're gonna do the giveaway yeah. now. Thank you for all that information. And if you wanna plug your channel, where would you can be, where we can find you on Instagram and Facebook, go ahead and do that now. Yes, you can find us at Latina Podcasters, L-A-T-I-N-A -A Podcasters on Instagram, on Facebook. And then if you want to find the directory of the podcasters that are podcasting, go to latinapodcasters.com. I advise everybody to start diversifying their content. There are voices that sound amazing and they're bilingual and some of them speak Spanglish and you can find us all <laughs> over. But you can also find the Latina Podcasters Network playlist on Spotify as well. Just type in Latina Podcasters Network and it'll pop up all the, the podcasts that are on the network as well. Perfect. Rita, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you guys. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. So who's our, who's our lucky winner out there? Do you wanna do a drum roll for the winner? Um, snare roll <laughs> uh dr jolly pickett you've won the em usb with the mc100 headphones so we'll be reaching out to you shortly thank you for attending and uh the rest of you hang in there because we have two more uh special guests that we're bringing on and we're doing two other giveaways so hang in there and with that i would like to introduce um i'm excited to bring in another special guest a voice legend rob paulson um Thank you for joining us, Rob. I, I could have thought I didn't out about happening. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm a smart ass. Hi, Rob. Yeah. You got the audio. Just Anheuser. <laughs> Tony, Sounds but the so fact good. So shit, what are you talking about? <laughs> I wish I could do it that good. <laughs> you know, I, thank you so much. And by the way, brava, uh, you, my goodness, Rita was Amazing, just right? astonishing. Yeah. Not surprising. I had never had the pleasure of, of meeting Ms. Bautista, but talk about a primer on how to podcast, how to do it. What? That's awesome. Amazing. Right. Yeah. Rob, yeah. Rita, you great. just killed it. That was 
that was really, really special. So I, I got nothing. Um, <laughs> I just want to now thank you very much and happy new year, everybody. The, uh, the first 20 days, uh, notwithstanding. Um, but, uh, no, this is a real pleasure. I really appreciate you guys allowing me to, uh, you know, to, to be here and share my, um, love of my particular, uh, Mackie carbon element, baby. It's Mackie by Cracky. That's what I say. <laughs> you know, I'm going to ask you, and you've got to tell us, please, yeah. and do some of the, uh, what are some of the characters that you've voiced? Well, let's see. For our purposes, Yakko Warner, who is now back, thank God for Hulu, um, on Animaniacs. I'm also Pinky. No. Hello. <laughs> and look, all I have to do is start talking like some stupid lab mouse, and both Craig and Bradley start to smile. <laughs> Unless, of course, it's... It. It's just, it could be gas, which is fine too. I don't know. Um, but uh, when you guys were very, very little, I was Raphael of the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And um, and now my bandana has been switched out for some reading glasses because even turtles, we do live a long time, but we uh, our eyes start to go south. Um, and then I got to be Donatello on a later iteration on Nickelodeon. I was Donatello for, I don't know, four or five years. So if I live to be a hundred, I can knock out all four turtles, but, um, uh, and now because nobody gives a darn what I look like, I can do fun shows like Rick and Morty in which, um, the, the first episode I did of Rick and Morty, my lines started out with where are my testicles summer? Oh, uh, no. oh, you were snowball. I'm snowball baby. Uh, <laughs> right. It's That's the fantastic. Greatest, the greatest job in the world. And as I tell people, having been married for 30 odd years, I know precisely where my test. So let's just leave it at that. Yeah. But um, no, this is a real pleasure. Uh, I, I am thrilled not only to be involved with um, a company whose ethos reflects my own, but uh, because I am an old Hollywood dog, I've seen how things have gone from, you know, the old way. I started doing my own podcast 10 years ago, I bought a Sennheiser 416. I bought a little mixing thing. I bought a this. The mic alone, it's beautiful. It works great. But that mic is $1,100. Yeah. And I am telling you, and I, this is the God's honest truth. I think I mentioned this to you folks when we had our um, production meeting about this particular event. Uh, literally a month ago, um, you know, we're all celebrating COVID con in our own way and I'm able to still work from home. Uh, yeah. So we're doing new version, new episodes of Animaniacs for Hulu and Pinky in the Brain. Uh, and I um, was recording a new um, animated Ninja Turtle feature for Nickelodeon, uh, a direct to Nick feature, whatever. Uh, but here's my point. I um, had some work being done in my own place I asked the neighbor if I could use a room in her house because they're out of town, went over there, plugged in my computer with my carbon element, found a box to put my computer and my element on and found um, like a duvet that I just put over myself and recorded. And folks listening, this is the God's honest truth. I have um, uh, so many golden reel Emmy award winning producer, uh, studio owners, world-class sound engineers. This one was my friend, Devin Bowman. We were doing it from um, Atlantis, Atlantis Oceanic Sound in Burbank, right yeah. in the corner of, uh, of uh, Pass and Buena Vista. Yeah. And I got done and I said, let me tell you where I'm recording. He said, how are you doing, Robbie? I've known you. So I told him what I was doing. And he said, I swear to God, if you had not told me, I never would have known that you weren't using your fancy schmancy this and your fancy schmancy that literally plug and play. Literally that's, that was it. And, and it's air ready broadcast quality. I will be able to show people, Oh yeah. Those four or five scenes were recorded in my neighbor's extra bedroom under a blanket with my carbon over your head. Unbelievable. You guys, <laughs> this and, and this a few years ago, literally just a few years ago, would have been unheard of. Would have a uh, producer would have said, "Shit, I don't know, man. We're we got people at home. We've got a production schedule. Um, I don't know what we're gonna do." Well, I do. Just plug in your Mikey and uh, your your Mikey, your your <laughs> Mackie, Mackie Mikey, 
and off you go. It is remarkable, the technology that you guys are um, enabling all of us who are creative to play with at a price point, as um, uh, Rita mentioned, is uh, uh, um, very doable, bulletproof. And I'm telling you, man, there is no excuse to not scratch that itch in your soul to be creative. You have platforms that are free on which you can blast out your stuff. You can get information from people like um, Rita and others. And literally with the po at the point of a, a push of a button, I don't, I would have flipped out if I were 25 or 28 years old with this much tech for free yeah. with the exception of a very nice microphone that doesn't cost you the same as a 416. Yep. And I could push a button and it's air ready. This is unbelievable. So this excitement that you see on this end is utterly authentic. It's not manufactured because I'm old. I've been around and seen this. And I think I have a very valuable um, sort of anecdotal experience to share because, man, it ain't never been like this. And I've done 2,500 half hours of animation. I don't know how many video games, commercials, all that stuff. To be able to do this from home with Warner Brothers and Steven Spielberg and all that and forget about it. It's crazy. Crazy. That's, uh, first of all, that's high praise. And uh, Truth. we really appreciate that. And, you know, it's funny. We were talking about this exact same thing with Rita when we first all logged into this uh, is – the, the fact that, you know, when I first started audio engineering, which was in the mid nineties, um, in order to do the kind of production that we're doing here today, uh, it would have cost you three to $500,000 oh. to oh. get into it. And now it is, it, the software's free. The, the, the tools are, are low enough cost that, it truly democratizes people's ability to to be creative and and you know especially now in places you know i went to high school in mississippi and uh <laughs> understood tag whatever you want on top of that it's See, man, I, I grew up in i grew up in flint, <laughs> flint michigan i came yeah. out to la ostensibly to do live action and music. I was a singer who became an actor and I was doing all of that. Animation presented itself like a lot of us. We live that axiom that or that luck is when opportunity meets preparation. I didn't come out here specifically to do voice work, but what we find out as we get older is, man, am I ever glad I went to that party because I met the woman of my dreams or I met the man who changed my life or I went to LA I was doing singing stuff, writing music, singing demos, doing commercials, doing MacGyver and episodic television, and boom, animation came up and people found out that I could sing in character and do all this other stuff. Um, but that is exactly right. You just, there is no excuse anymore. Now, whether you're in Mississippi or Flint or wherever, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I understand exactly what you're talking about. People still say to me, younger folks, very young, say, you know, I'm, I'm really not sure what I should do. I live in Watertown, New York. And well, OK. But in the meantime, whether you make a dime, whether you make a dime at doing what makes your soul happy is not the issue, folks. The issue is to do that. The issue is to is to get your stuff out there. Yeah. It, it, it really doesn't matter. Um, you have opportunities to be as creative as your mind allows you to and access to an audience that's, I don't even, impossibly large. And as you said earlier, Craig, the cost to do that even 10 years ago yeah. would have been astronomical. Uh, or you'd have to move to the- To, to, the to LA. To get it done. Yeah. But, you know, being creative uh, lets you feed your soul. Exactly. And it, it makes you better in a lot of ways. Um, ah, um, there's a good question yeah, for you here. The comments are blowing up for you, Rob. They've got a couple of questions, man. None they, of these people are with the IRS, are they? <laughs> oh, we scream for that. Thank you. Good. So Rhett wants to know, how did you get into voiceover work and what's it like in the voiceover industry nowadays? 
Well, as I said, I came out here, Rhett, um, ostensibly to do live action and music, and that's what I was doing. Um, uh, I didn't realize when I was creating character voices because, as our friend Craig said, it made my soul happy. Um, I didn't realize that that was all going to come into play uh, when I was in my late 20s, early 30s. <clears throat> and uh, so the first thing that I noticed when I, the, the first cartoons I did were G.I. Joe and Transformers. And the first thing I noticed walking into the studio was not only did I recognize actors from episodic television who were doing animation as well, acting is acting. I just want to work. So I walked in there and I realized that the cool thing is just nobody cares what I look like. As a young actor, I wasn't limited by being an average looking Caucasian kid from Flint. And now I'm still not uh, limited by being an old Caucasian actor from Flint. Um, as long as I can still do Carl Weezer, then, you know, I'm finishing my croissant and Craig and Brad are going to flip out. <laughs> it's like I'm having even... all these flashbacks of my childhood, man. Yeah, Jimmy Neutron should, right there. I'm like, oh, what is going it. on? You should see it from my side, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh my God. Jimmy Love Byrne, it. who wanted to ask, do you ever find yourself utilizing the unique frequency characteristics of a microphone you're working oh. with to enhance elements of a character's voice? Enhance question. element. Thank you oh. very much. Ooh, see, I didn't even pick up on that. I'm the well pro. done, Jimmy. Um, you know what, Jimmy? That's very sweet of you to ask, but I'm not that smart. I don't know that much, which is, again, uh, a, a a total compliment to Mackie. Um, I do know some of my, one of my dearest friends, Corey Burton is a, just a genius talent, but he's a mic geek and he knows, well, I'm going to use my Telefunken U47 today because I want it to sound a little bit more like uh, Christopher Lee when I do Count Dooku. Yeah. I don't, I don't know that stuff. All I know is that <clears throat> I know how to work a mic depending upon, you know, what I want to do with it and be more badass than my visage would suggest. But it, 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 uh, the point is if you're not a technophobe, such as yours, such as yours truly, you, you don't have to worry about whether or not you've got the right mic to do that particular nuance of the voice. This is crazy. And, and it's it's one stop shopping for I'm not going to, you know, I'm, you guys can look up and see what it costs. But let me tell you something. It ain't twelve hundred bucks, yeah. which is what I dropped on the 416. I'm also using my MP 460s. Look, when we oh. do Animaniacs in concert live, Love it. I have beautiful IEMs made for my ears, but they were eleven hundred dollars. Yeah. Now, when Rob Puzzitello sent me my carbon mic and my MP 460s, uh, unless you just want to drop another 700 bucks on IEMs, there's no reason to. And I'm, and with all due respect, I can afford it. I don't, <laughs> yeah. uh, there's no reason to do Love that. So Love it. I'm sorry about the rambling, but I only got a few minutes and I really want to tell people that this is the real deal, baby. It really is. And trust me, when we take over the world, we only use the top quality stuff. No. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, I thank I you so much, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. I, I just talked to Maurice this morning. One of these days, we'll get a, the next NAM show. God NAM it. We'll get everybody, um, and we'll get Mo and me together, and we'll do um, – in fact, go ahead. Um, one of you gentlemen, Brad, oh. asked me, Pinky, are you pondering what I'm pondering? Go ahead. Pinky, are you pondering what I'm pondering right now? I think so, Brad. But if Jimmy crafts Kona, nobody cares. Why does he keep doing it? Point. <laughs> <laughs> so we got we have one more question before we do the giveaway. And we want sure. to thank Rob again for coming on. Absolutely I, I amazing should. guest. Love you. Uh, you know, my childhood watching your cartoons growing up and just hearing your voice and, and putting a face to the to the cartoons that I've watched and seen. It's just, it's pretty amazing. It's like you said, puts a smile on my face, warms my heart, makes me feel good. 
And um, so any specific software or DAW to work on a voiceover. And I would like to talk about, you know, pro tools first that we offer. And I'm sure in the professional studios that you send your work to get mixed on, it's, it's more than likely nine times out of 10, it's pro tools. Absolutely. And, yeah. and again, uh, again, Joel, thank you for your question. I'm not um, trying to be trite and get, and get out of answering the question. I only use, pardon me, I use Twisted Wave to record my stuff. Um, I always run a backup because if I'm doing like, uh, I was doing IPDTL the other day with uh, Connection Open, which is a new platform um, in which there's very little loss. It's pretty much lossless, yeah. but everything on their end, you're right. It's all Pro Tools with the latest and grazes. Thank you, Gustavo. I love you too, Narf. <laughs> um, but um, no, I literally use, uh, and by the way, I'm only using uh, Twisted Wave because I had it in my computer and I know how to use it. I don't even use it at the top level of what it's capable of. So the fact that you guys include Pro Tools in your bundles is way more than virtually anybody I would submit, uh, having done three or 400 episodes of my own podcast, would ever need. The difference also is that most people who are watching know what the hell they're doing. And it's not false modesty. I am an actor. I am not, and a singer, I am not a tech guy. Uh, that's why I really, truly love Mackie stuff. It is um, the ethos of the, the behind Mackie, which these fine folks have explained to you, is about finding ways for people to, to satisfy their souls. How much more noble a mission statement can you get from a company? I mean, really? Um, they're helping you access the part of your soul that you cannot shut down. Yeah. That's the idea. And, and to be <laughs> able to be involved with someone who is helping foster that creativity and, and you're right. Um, you will become a better person in general because you're, you're not stifling your creativity, whatever that means. And For so sure. I'm really proud of being, of being, any part of the Mackey family. And, um, and so it's an absolute privilege. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. And now we're going to pick our lucky winner, lucky winner Woo! number two of the carbon microphone. And Trevor Beckway is the winner of the carbon hey, microphone. Congrats, Trevor. There yes. you go, Trev. I hope you find some way to get chicks with your carbon microphone. Now, I realize that's totally inappropriate, but I mean baby chickens, which is even weird. <laughs> oh, man. Thank you so much, Rob. You're great. Amazing. Thanks, guys. Yeah. So we got one more special guest coming on. And uh, we want to thank him for waiting backstage patiently with over 20 years of experience as a highly respected producer, remixer, engineer in the music industry. We're excited to learn that DJ Kova's had a lot of exciting things to say about our new Chromium microphone. Kova, what's up, man? Hey, welcome, Kova. What's up, guys? How you doing? Oh, oh I, I had my mute on. How you doing, everybody? How's everybody? Good. That's How good. are you? How are you, sir? So great to be here. I will not do voices like Rob. That's the one thing I don't do. Please don't ask me to do that <laughs> or sing. I'll, I'll save you guys the the uh, the torture. Go ahead. <laughs> so you're a DJ, an engineer, and you also host your own podcast. This might be a better question. Is there anything that you don't do? Uh, yeah, definitely sing. I won't sing. <laughs> Terrible. Not enough auto tune in the world. Not, oh, not okay. The future. Yeah. So how often do you host your own podcast? Yeah. So uh, at the moment, I do twice a week. It's uh, two two-hour shows, and we do a pop-up show every every now and then. So uh, about six hours a week, something like that. And how Great. long have you been doing it now? Um, so we started November 2019, pre-pandemic, and then it really started to – that's when it, it took off right around uh, the pandemic, about March, April. So you got to plug your channel. Where do we find you at? And and what do you guys talk about on the podcast? So Tweak Music Tips. Uh, we talk about anything and all things music and DJ related. Uh, we've had uh, artists like Little John on. We've had uh, CeCe Peniston, uh, Todd Terry, if you guys are house people, uh, David Morales. Uh, I'm trying to think. Fat Man Scoop. I mean, uh, 
uh, nasty beat makers that did the DJ Khaled song. I don't know if anybody's ever heard it in the stadium. All I do is win. Uh, cool and Dre, they've done like uh, Fat Joe and all kinds of people. So, yes, we've had a lot of uh, heavy hitters. That is awesome, man. You got a long list of heavy names there. Uh, so you're currently using the Mackie Element Chromium microphone. And in what ways have you used this mic and how has it helped you with your podcast? Yeah, absolutely. Love the mic. Um, so one of the things I do is uh, we do, uh, host predominantly on Twitch and everything is live. So one of the biggest, my biggest gripe with a lot of microphones is you need more hardware. That's number one. And number two is there's no way to actually actually uh, monitor or meter or know when things are working. So uh, the best thing in the world is this uh, carbon. And uh, yeah, I mean, excuse me, element, excuse me. And I have this meter. Chromium. Chromium. Yep, yep, you got it. Sorry, I, was, I knew it was on there, right? Uh, yeah, so the, uh, the chromium is on here and uh, it has this meter on it that is like phenomenal. So best thing you've ever seen. I don't know if anybody's ever used it. So when I'm live, I know when I'm working, I know when I'm not just like before I was muted. And uh, not only was the button, but there was no, no actual metering. So the, uh, the Chromium amazing. Love it. One of my favorite features of the, the Chromium is actually, you know, uh, from a audio engineering standpoint, one of the things that I really miss with a lot of these solutions is some kind of a troubleshooting signal flow thing. Like, you know, you're talking and you don't know, you can't hear it on the other side. You don't know, all right, well, where's the problem? Is it in the microphone? Is the microphone not hearing me? Is it downstream of that? And uh, the just that simple metering solution on the Chromium really helps you kind of track down Oh, is it the mic or is it something else? And uh, it allows you to really quickly like rule that out as part of your signal chain. And because it's a USB microphone, it's connected to the computer. If you rule out the microphone, there's really only a couple other things that could be right. So uh, it's a setting on the computer or yeah. No. So, yeah. Uh, this is great. I mean, and uh, it has a, a headphone monitoring system where you you know you have your own inputs for the for the headphone. I have to show you guys because this thing makes me excited. <laughs> uh, it has the headphone jack. You have your own. You have your own uh, uh, metering. You have yep. the blend right for the USB and the mic. You have an auxiliary, which is great with an eighth inch for your auxiliary, and then yep. instrument in the back. So if anybody's playing anything live, I mean, and then you have your own uh, volume knob there. So I mean, honestly, it's it's an all in one. Uh, what I love about it is I can travel and I can take it with me because sometimes I'm not at the studio. I'll have to be somewhere remote. So uh, and it's all just there. So it's the mixer and mic all in one. Yeah, That's we great. love it, man. So we've got a couple of questions for you right now there. Joseph wants to know, um, I kind of think you answered it, but what is your favorite Mackie microphone so far? Yeah, so I've tried them all. I have tried them all. Uh, I love them, but uh, I'm one of the people that I kind of stretch every every time I need just a little bit more, just a little bit more, just a little bit more. So I feel like uh, if there's anybody you can ask, I probably put this thing through the ringer. Uh, and uh, the, the Chromium's the one. I mean, honestly, it's just a one-stop shop. Uh, the price is phenomenal for what it costs, uh, for what it does, and how it sounds. Another thing, too, is I've compared it to other microphone, other manufacturers. All the Mackie stuff is very much quality. Uh, but this one, uh, I feel like it is, is great for my voice. I don't tend to have a, a low voice, but it, it, it's, uh, it has a really, really nice texture. And like I said, all the extra bells and whistles are uh, absolutely phenomenal. phenomenal. Now, one thing I will say, uh, and this is something I think is really, really important, and I wanted to say is I've been like a Mackie user forever. I've used the 16 uh, uh, the channel, the 24 channel, and the uh, 32 8, the 8 bus uh, mixers. And... I even found a receipt, which I was telling uh, Brad and Craig yeah. from 1998 <laughs> for my first uh, HR824. So not to date my Nice. Damn. Yeah. So, and uh, and I beat the crap out of these things. So, uh, you know, I, I put Mackie through the ringer, but uh, they last. I mean, these things are great. They're great quality stuff. Uh, they've always been affordable. Affordable and quality, I feel like, doesn't usually go hand in hand, but Mackie's, uh, you know, done it time and time again. Tried and when true. When did those monitors finally give up the ghost on you? Literally, uh, I, I want to say four months ago, four or five months ago. One, it started to hum. I mean, listen, it's been through four moves. I, you know, I mean, where, if it had a level <laughs> meter on it, it's been in the red many, many times. I mean, I've. 
speed these things up. And finally, one just gave out. But I mean, that's what, tw 22 years? Yeah. I mean, honestly, uh, I, I, I don't know a product that I've used and beat the crap out of how I've, I've done it. And, you know, just it, it's amazing. It's amazing. Uh, and now I actually use the CRXs, which are another product. Holy cow. Like, these things are such uh, so uh, the price is great. They sound phenomenal. I have the eights and the sub. There you go. Uh, you have no idea. Like, and I'm a, I'm like a, a like I love um, volume. I love uh, uh, Sonic. You know the way it does. Like, it has to have good bottom, especially with the music and stuff. Being a DJ, and uh, these things are phenomenal. And and the sub not only is it Bluetooth, but it has this uh, knob where you get to kind of control how much bottom yeah. end has, especially with my yeah. my my uh, eights. And my room is very big, so. Trust me, if if it wasn't gonna, you know, if it didn't translate well in that room, that's the room, and they sound phenomenal and they knock. So excited! Well, but, you know, I've been a DJ since 1987, mm. and um, yeah, so long in the tooth there. And uh, when I came on board, I've been at Mackie for a little over two years, and uh, when I had the opportunity to kind of re envision the CRX. Uh, line one of the things i knew i wanted to do was to offer that eight inch model because for djs man it just you know you can't go in with like a a three or a five and and be happy and uh, uh it, it there needed to be something there to really kind of you know it, that early DJ, I want to use these to play my dorm party kind of thing, or you know what I mean, like to that user as well. We we needed to have something there, and and uh, yeah, I love that you uh, you like the CRXs as well. So love them, yeah. Uh, Show blue, yeah. What headphones do you use with the Chromium? So these are probably one of my favorites. Uh, these are the MC three fifties. These are, I mean. I can't even like I said, I'm a studio guy, so I'm a little bit of a snob when it comes to 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 like how things sound. So uh when I got when I purchased these, these were like, I mean, honestly, uh the 350s are good. I've even tried the the 100s and honestly, for the price, yeah, they're not bad at all. But uh, so if it's if it's uh you're on a budget, but honestly, the 350s for for what they're priced, I mean uh they're they're top notch. So depending if you're using for you know uh, voiceover or you're just podcasting and stuff like that, uh, you could use the 100s. I love 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 the 350s. And uh, I'm sorry, Kevin Kevin Lee Clark, is this really live uh, uh, broadcast or replay? This is live. <laughs> Hi Kevin Lee. <laughs> Hi. Shout out Hello. to you. Yeah. We got another question too from Joel. Uh, he wants to know what's your preferred DAW to make music. Yeah, so I'm, I, I use a couple of things. So uh, I love, this is another thing. This is what I want to talk about cost. One of the things that you guys do is you bundle Pro Tools. Like, come on. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and uh, what does it have? 20, is it 23 or 26 effects on it? Uh, 23 included yeah. plugins 23. that you get. 23. Yeah. I mean, what else can you do? And, and, and Pro Tools is an industry standard, or standard. I mean, I use Logic. I use Ableton. But just everything that comes in the box that's one of the things that i really uh i must say like uh they really thought this through where you don't really have to get anything else uh and that's kind of what you fall short with some of the other uh manufacturers unfortunately is that you know you just get it and then it is what it is and like i said i i, I before i used to have a lot more hardware on my desk which is a very limited space especially yeah. with uh, live broadcasting and stuff like that so I mean, uh, phenomenal. So absolutely great. And uh, Greg Cam Cameron says he's been a, a Mackie user since the early 90s. Shout out to him. Nice. So we got another question here. DJ Koba, do you find yourself swapping through the polar patterns frequently on the on the Chromium microphone? That's a great question. Um, one of the things I do notice is if I have guests, I do sometimes change the polar pa patterns. Uh, reason is, is, you know, I want to keep the, the audio consistent. So if I'm trying to do someone across from me or if I'm trying to do the room, if there's a, a few of us, uh, yeah. And uh, the Chromium is great because it has four polar patterns. Wonderful. And we got one more question there. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, go ahead, Craig. Sorry about that. 
I just wanted to say, since we're talking about polar patterns, it, that it's important to know that on both carbon and chromium, we offer not only the normal polar patterns that, that you would uh, expect, but also stereo on both microphones. So um, you, you, do you have that one where you have all the, the, the open one? Do you still have that one? Put it back together. So uh, yeah, I, I had taken one of the 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 carbons apart so that I could show all five my uh, all five capsules, because people didn't believe that there were five capsules in it. They were like, "Oh no, you mean it's five patterns, but it's like three capsules." <laughs> no, there are five <laughs> capsules. Five capsules. One, two, three, four, five. So, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, so chromium, chromium it depends. Uh, listen, I, I use the carbon as well. I started with the carbon. Great sounding mic. A lot of manufacturers actually make a similar one. But like I said, uh, because my show is live, I had to know when it was working and when it wasn't. And this to me is all in one. I have all my knobs right in front of me. So it was great. Big shout out to DJ Cuba. I see you. Uh, Max Evans. A lot of people in here. This is great. Yeah, man. It's jumping right now. We've got a lot of questions going, but hang in there. We're going to be doing the giveaway. We're going to uh, answer this last question, and then we'll uh, we'll do the giveaway. So Eric wants to know how uh, that instrument input works on the microphone, and can you also give some technical information about what you can connect there? Can you uh, elaborate on that for us, Craig? Uh, so it's a hi z input. What, there's two inputs on the Chromium. There is a hi z input, which is made for like plugging in a guitar, and then uh, there is also the aux input, which is a stereo TRS connector, which you would use. It's kind of like uh, the connector that comes out of uh, your phone, your or phone, for example. Yeah, or a tablet. Yeah. And so you could hook up a sound source there. You could hook up uh, uh, a keyboard. Um, anything with a stereo, you might have to get a different kind of cable. You might have to get like a quarter inch to eighth inch or, but, um, yeah, you, you plug in there and then you have volume controls for both of those inputs as well. So you can, uh, control that level relative to your, your microphone. I, I just see a great question here. So, uh, Jamie Montgomery asks, uh, Koval, what's your favorite classic Mackie product? I actually have three. <laughs> Three are my absolute favorites, and they're all different. My 32.8 uh, mixer was my absolute favorite mixer that I've had. Um, I love that thing. I'm actually, I regret selling it. I probably should have had it. A friend of mine has kids from, I think, way back then, too, and I still see it in his uh, basement when we visit his, uh, his studio. Uh, that's one of them. Uh, the other one's my HRA24s. Absolutely love them. They have the MK2s now, right? Twos? Yep. Um, yep. I never heard the twos, but the, the A24s are great. Uh, and then my SRM 450s that I used to use for DJing, uh, I had the first generation, which were phenomenal. I mean, they, they're all great, uh, and they've got newer products then, but those were my three, three favorite, like must have Mackie products. Perfect. All right. So now we're going to do the giveaway. We want to thank everybody that joined us today and, uh, all your questions. If we weren't able to get to them, you can definitely find us on Facebook and Instagram at Mackie gear. Definitely uh, follow us on YouTube at Mackie TV for all the latest updates and shoot us questions there too as well. We'd love to hear your feedback and other content that we can create. And uh, uh, Kova, if you want to plug your channel one more time before we do that giveaway, that'd be awesome. Thanks sure. so much. If you guys could follow us on Instagram and uh, uh, Twitch, we'd love to hear you, uh, from you or even our YouTube channel. It's Tweak Music Tips and uh, we'd love to connect with you guys. Perfect. Thank you guys so much. So our winner for the Chromium microphone is Keith Campbell. Congratulations, Keith. <laughs> yes, yes. Love we it. Have, <laughs> we had to do the DJ air. We got to do the oh, thing too. We, we needed that, man. We needed that. That was perfect. <laughs> Campbell, congratulations. <laughs> Oh, man. Wonderful. So congratulations, Keith. We'll be reaching out to you shortly. Again, we want to thank everybody that joined us. Uh, we look forward to seeing you in the next one where we're going to be doing more giveaways. So definitely stay tuned and stay at the Mackie booth. Uh, thanks again. And we'll see you guys in the next one.